she's a youngster who needs help, and who I'm deeply interested in helping. I wish you had managed the time to come in and talk with me. Yes, well, thanks. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. If I came, what good would it do? You think because I'm her mother, I have a key? She's 19. There's all that life that has happened outside of me, beyond me. When is there time to remember, to sift, to weigh, to total? I will start and there will be an interruption and I will have to gather it all together again. All that I did and did not do, what should have been and what cannot be helped. She was a beautiful baby. She loved motion, loved light, loved color and music and texture. She was a miracle to me. I nursed all the children, but with her, I nursed with the fierce rigidity of first motherhood. I did like the book said. She was 10 months old, and to the woman I left her with, she was no miracle at all. I appreciate it. She's sleeping. I had to leave Emily somewhere. I had to look for work. Emily's father left me before she was a year old. He said in a note he left, he could no longer endure sharing want with us. I was 19. It was the pre-relief, pre-WPA world of the Depression. It was very hard getting work. We can take two jobs. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. We can take two, two workers. We need them over at Montgomery Steel. I can work. I'm a hard worker. I can work. I'm sorry. This is for you. I'm sorry. You. You too. You too. Come on. I'm sorry, folks. We only need two today. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm a hard worker. What okay. do you need? This is what we need. According to President Roosevelt last year, Excuse me. Your door was open. I, I'm looking for a street. I think it's called Sawyer Avenue. I heard they were hiring. A textile mill. Hiring. You know, those jobs ended a week ago. Finally, I got something, hashing at night, working in a diner. Now I had most of my days free for Emily, since I worked nights. Oh, look at you walking, Emily. Look at you walking. Look. Oh, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Charlie didn't show up. You can't go. What? You can't go. Charlie didn't show up. I've got my daughter at home waiting. The woman next door won't even keep her. Didn't you hear me? You can't go. Who's going to clear and wash if you leave? I've got customers out there. We'd taken a bus out to where her father's family lived. With all the hashing at night and long hours at the diner, it couldn't go on. I just couldn't keep her with me. Hello. Emily's grandparents. I hardly knew them. This is Emily. We'll take good care of her. 
Money went fast. It took me eight months to get enough together to bring her back. And when I did, she had just gotten over chicken pox. She was two and different looking walking quick and nervous like her father. After a half year, she was old enough for nursery school, they said. Why did I always listen to them? People in authority. What authority do they have? Leave her here? The woman was sleeping while children were playing. Hello? Excuse me? Aren't you the teacher? But it was the only place there was. And it was the only way I could hold a job. Never did clutch and implore, don't go, mommy, like other children in the morning when I took her. She just went on in. Emily was at that nursery school for two years. The teachers there, even without knowing, I knew they were evil. Why aren't you outside? Because Alvin hit you? Well, that's no reason. Go on, scaredy. Go ahead, shoot. Oh, but she always had a reason why she should stay at home and not go to that nursery school. Emily, you're going to school. It's a holiday today. No school. No school. They told me. Emily, it's not a holiday. You have to go to school today, okay? Emily, go inside and get me some more clothespins. Anna, you need to smile at Emily more. When you look at her, smile. She needs you to do that. Smile? Well, yes, of course, but what was in my face when I looked at her? I loved her. She was four and a half, and she had a new daddy now, Bill. And we told ourselves she was old enough to leave alone. Where are you going, Mommy? We're going out. Can't you go some other time, Mommy? Some other time, like tomorrow? No, oh, Emily. It'll be just a little while. Good night. Go to bed.
It was months later. It was the night I went to the hospital to have Susan, my second child, and Emily had gotten sick. Hello. <laughs> She's all right. Just let her sleep. Um, the medicine, if she needs it, is in the... It's in the bathroom in the green bottle. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Look at how small her hands are. And her little feet. And I think she looks like you. Ah, uh, Emily, you go see what she wants. Yeah, okay. What? I want to see the baby. You might still be sick, Emily. Go back to bed, honey. She could not come near the new baby or me. We were afraid she could be contagious. After all, she had red measles. Mommy. Mommy! What? Can you come in? I'm exhausted, Emily. I just finished nursing your sister. You all right? Go back to sleep, darling. It's just a bad dream. Mommy, please. Can't you come in? Emily, no. Go to sleep. There's nothing to hurt you. Twice. Just twice was I able to manage to come in to see her. When they found out that I was having such a difficult time caring for her, they persuaded me at the clinic to send her away to a convalescent home where she could have the kind of food and care I couldn't manage for her. You'll be free to concentrate on the new baby, the social worker said. I'm sure you'll like it here. Sure you will. Step down, honey. There you go. All right. Come on. Emily Henson. Emily, take your hands out of your mouth. Come, dear, I'll take you now. Come. Say goodbye to your parents. Well, can't we come in? Go in with her? No, not a good idea. It's best that the separation be clean. Ma. Goodbye, Emily. We were notified that we couldn't visit during her first six weeks. But after that, we could come every other Sunday. Mama! Mama! It was a handsome place. Green lawns and tall trees, fluted flower beds. Mama! <laughs> Honey, how are you? Good. This is Rose, my new friend. Hi, Rose. Hi. You cannot come in to see your daughter, the nurse had said on the phone when I called to say we were coming. Those are the rules. Stay outside, stay at a distance. Do not contaminate the children with germs of parental affection. You look like you've gained some weight. I don't know. Rose's parents aren't coming. No? 
I'm sorry to hear that. So that's how it went. She was up there, and we were down on the sidewalk below. Every other Sunday, talking. She wrote once a week, the labored writing of a seven-year-old. I am fine. How is Susan? If I write my letter nicely, they will give me a star. Love, Emily. She misspelled words, and they never did give her a star. Oh, I missed her. friend Rose. She isn't here anymore. They moved her to another cottage. They don't like you to love anyone here. She didn't look well. Many nights I couldn't sleep, haunted by her image. We had to get her back. I sent letter after letter, more letters. Finally, the social worker got her released. It took eight months, and she was so different looking. She was... Oh. <laughs> Aren't you glad to be back? Yes. <laughs> no. Her health came back slowly. She began to eat more. That was a good sign. I was busy with the other children. There was a third by then, Ronnie, and yet another one on the way. She fretted about her appearance, thin and dark and foreign looking, at a time when every little girl was supposed to look like a blonde replica of Shirley Temple, like, like Susan. And she and Susan, oh, how they didn't get along. What are you doing in my bed? That's my doll, Susan. Give it back to me. Can't have it. It's mine. Gave it to me, remember? You're ruining it. Give it back to me. No. Na -na 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 -boo -boo. From the first when we brought her back from the hospital until <laughs> always, there was barely ever a time when she wasn't jealous. Alrighty, put your pencils down, take out your reading books, open them to page 12. Yes, Betty? 
That's all right. You're finished using it for today. All right. Everyone's at page 12? Yeah. Who's going to read first today? Let's see. How about uh, Emily? John. Tommy. Tommy. Come on, Emily. You can read this. It's the same story we read yesterday. Begin reading, Emily. Tommy. Everybody together? Tommy and Jamie were walking down the street when they saw a little puppy. See, Emily, it's not that hard. You can read it. How else could she be but unprepared? And this went on year after year. Emily was a teenager now and had to help in our family life with other responsibilities. She was the eldest. Emily. Emily, wake up. Oh. It's time to get up, dear. I need your help. Come on. Oh, mother. I'm making peanut butter and jelly. Is that okay? Well, that's fine. When you're finished, will you help Ronnie get dressed for school? Yes, mother. All those years changed Emily. Moved her from being a beautiful baby to being homely, to being a child unsure of herself. Emily, supper. Come and set the table. Mother, will you come in here for a minute? How old was I in this picture? You were eight months old. I was pretty, wasn't I? You were a beautiful baby. Come and sit at the table, now. Well, how is everything? Very good. It's delicious. Ronnie, eat your broccoli. Yes, Dad. Thank God. Those were nice times in our family. But Emily, Emily was mostly off to herself, alone amongst us. Bizarre, but out of her gloom or out of her boredom, who's to say where it came from? She had a talent for comedy. Here's Billy. I believe the answer to that question is two, Miss Graham. <laughs> yes, two. I'm sure of it. <laughs> Don't you have one about some boy in your class that always has a cold? Oh, John. Emily? Emily, do you, uh... We have homework tonight. <laughs> Say, don't you have a, an amateur show coming up at your school? Yes. Why don't you do something like this for that show? And now we have a special treat for you for her very first time on stage. Here's Emily. Let's help her out, boys and girls. I call this a sticky situation. <sighs> she was good. She had a talent. <laughs> Thank you. Me. They gave me a trophy and everything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mother, they applauded for me. They loved me. I can't believe it. I can't wait to show you my trophy. <laughs> Can we have something nice for dinner tonight? Okay, I'll see you when I get home.
Let's hear it for the cute, the funny, Emily! And then there were other performances. Thank you, thank you. You know, parents are always wondering why their kids don't want to go to school. I'm going to give you one good reason. Teachers. There were even some who said to me, you really ought to do something about a gift like that. Real talent there. Real talent. Said that about 1,492 times. But without money or knowing how, what does one do? She's coming. Coming now. Whatever occasioned your concern did not happen today. No. No, she is happy tonight. Aren't you ever going to finish the ironing, Mother? Whistler painted his mother in a rocker. I'd have to paint mine standing over an ironing board. Hungry. Mother, don't get me up with the rest in the morning. No? Well, I thought you had midterms tomorrow. Oh, those. Well, in a couple of years, we'll all be A-bombed, and it won't matter a bit anyway. A-bombed. She said it before. She believes it. Yes, she was a child seldom smiled at. Yes, her father left me before she was a year old. Yes, she had care. She hated those early years. We were poor. We could not afford for her the soil of easy growth. I was a young mother. I was a distracted mother. There were three other children pushing up, demanding. Emily, she was the child of anxious, not proud love. She kept too much in herself. She has much to her, and probably little will come of it. She is a child of her age, of depression, of war, of fear. Let her be. So all that is in her will not bloom. There's still enough to live by. Only help her to know. Help make it. So there's cause for her to know that she's more than this dress on the ironing board. Helpless before the iron. Help her to know.